Today, we're going to talk about venture capital stocks. And by that, we mean funds that are publicly traded that invest at least 25% of their assets in startups. And before we get into that, I wanted to touch on this concept of asset class allocation. And what you see here is a chart that shows where the assets we hold are allocated across asset classes. So at Nanalyze, we talk about tech stocks. And you can see that those actually make up a very small proportion of the total assets that we're managing. So we have 36 tech stocks in that portfolio. That makes up 13% of our assets. The highest weighting that we have is uh, in our dividend growth investing strategy, Quantigents, and that's a 30 uh, stock portfolio that pretty much just manages itself. The only reason that we'd ever need to do something is if a stock we're holding stops increasing dividends. And then you can see, you work your way down the list here, we have some funds, and those are domiciled in the UK and in Hong Kong. There's some cash, and then there's alternative assets, and these do quite well uh, when you have inflation. So we've got some wine, art, Bitcoin, which hasn't done so well, as you know, and gold. And gold in particular, that's a, a flight to safety asset class that's been around since um, mankind first started walking the earth. So we're looking at replacing that with a different asset class in particular, something that's relevant to our audience would be startups. So when ARK came out with their latest venture capital fund offering we looked at that and it's certainly something that we're considering they've uh, since released more information we'll probably come around and take a second look at that now before we get into talking about publicly traded venture capital stocks i wanted to touch on this notion of net asset value or nav and in the world of finance they call this mark to market and it's um fair value accounting which is figuring out the value of an asset based on the current market price. Sometimes that is, that's very easy. So you have cash is cash, right? Then you have publicly traded stocks. Uh, those usually always have a price, whether that's a closing price or a currently trading at price. But for private companies, that becomes a little bit more difficult. And the most traditional way to value a private company is based on the valuation that was ascribed by institutional investors at their last funding round. So that's going to be a, a very relevant concept for what we're gonna talk about today. And that's these four UK venture capital stocks that we're considering. And this is not an exhaustive list of all venture capital funds that are publicly traded. It's simply ones that we've covered that are quite popular. And for whatever reason, these particular vehicles are popular in the UK. And that's probably because of the tax incentives and benefits for retail investors to hold them. But uh, what you'll notice here is that each one of these trades at a discount to NAV. What does that mean? Well, it means that it, if you take Scottish mortgage, that the price per share is 10% less than if you sold all the assets and divided that money up uh, amongst the outstanding shares. And why? do these assets trade at a discount? Well, we'll talk about why we think that is. Now, before we get into that, I wanted to look at a particular example here. This is a uh, firm called IP Group. And what's interesting about this is some might argue that assets are trading at a discount to NAV right now because we're in a bear market. And the expectations of future growth are priced less. That's certainly the case, but when it comes to IP Group, you can see here that at least over the last several years, it's always traded at a significant discount to NAV, and that's very interesting. So when we take a closer look at IP Group, what they're holding, this is a breakdown of the assets that they have. At the top there is Oxford Nanopore. They held 14% of that company prior to the IPO, at which point in time it made up 33% of their NAV. Well, today it makes up 16% of their NAV and they still hold 10% of the company. That means that the IPO time, they had an opportunity to exit that position and they decided to hold 10%. They only exited 4% of the company ownership that they had. So that's 
certainly something that hasn't served them well as the price of Oxford uh, nanopore has uh, fell dramatically. In second place, you see here they have an investment in this fusion company called First Light Fusion. They recently had a breakthrough where they were able to achieve fusion by shooting a projectile at 14,500 miles per hour into uh, fuel that was compressed more than the center of Jupiter. So it's uh, quite remarkable technological achievement. Uh, the key thing to note there is that they haven't been able to uh, achieve fusion using less energy going in uh, than the energy that comes out. That's the whole point. So like every other company out there, that's the holy grail. And they're working towards that. This uh, success that they had is leading to another round they're hoping to raise at a billion dollar valuation right now they're around 500 million and ip group owns 27.5 percent of that company and they're expecting a commercial pilot in the 2030s again like most fusion companies uh, everything is a decade away and then you can go down the list here and look at these various startups they're holding and the methods uh, which they use to value them. Now, we're not going to get into that much because IP Group isn't a company that we're interested in holding. And there are several reasons for that. They have an unhealthy fascination with ESG, a heavy UK focus. This is probably the biggest reason why we wouldn't consider the firm. And when you benchmark their performance, you can't use NASDAQ. Uh, that doesn't make sense. You could use some US-based venture capital benchmarks, but that doesn't make sense either because they solely invest in UK firms for the most part, let's say a vast majority, although they also have been investing in some US companies, Australia and New Zealand, but the majority of their assets are in UK startups and we've seen their inability to take profits when an exit opportunity arises and we're continuing to avoid this company no matter how discounted the price is to nav and that brings us to uh, two other names here scottish mortgage and bailey gifford what you'll notice right away is that um, they hold 68 percent and 64 percent in publicly traded stocks respectively so that's a, a big problem for us we're looking to invest in startups to get that diversification effect from an alternative asset class now scottish mortgage is bailey gifford they're a asset management firm in the uk a popular one uh, they're the flagship investment trust with 16 billion dollars us assets under management that's more than all of arc invests etfs combined so it's a very large fund consequently the fees are very reasonable uh, 32 basis points or 0.32 percent and then the other uh, asset here we want to talk about is the bailey gifford us trust that has uh, higher fees but it's also quite interesting and we'll say that we really like both these funds in particular scottish mortgage if you read their collateral you can learn a lot there's a lot of wisdom and they're they're exceptionally competent in how they view tech investing it's very useful and insightful to read through their collateral and you quickly um, start to like uh, the long-term approach that they take now it's currently trading that investment vehicle at a 10% discount to NAV compared to a 3.6 month, 12 month average. And Bailey's US trust is trading at a 12% discount. So both these funds trading at a discount. And uh, when you look at the top 10 holdings of each, uh, there are a couple interesting things here. On the left is Scottish mortgage. You can see in position seven, that's SpaceX at 3.3% weighting, quite a small weighting. Now on the right hand side, you can see the holdings for Bailey Giffords US Trust and look at the top there, SpaceX at 6%. The last time we looked at Bailey Giffords US Trust, that was a 1.6% weighting. And when you look at the investment rounds they've made in SpaceX, which you can see right here, uh, you could see how the value is increasing over time as is common when you invest in startups and they keep participating in rounds. And that's very interesting though. You need to take into account the small percentage that SpaceX represents. And of course they have to um, exit their shares at an appropriate time. And they don't exactly write a check to their investors with the proceeds. They just take those and reinvest back into other startups. So it's a very uh, interesting vehicle. Now the third, let's say the fourth 
uh, publicly traded venture capital firm we want to talk about. And perhaps the most pure play is Molten Ventures. This used to be Draper Esprit. And here you can see their holdings, um, core holdings there, Graphcore, Avon, Thought Machine. And in this list, there are actually three publicly traded companies, UiPath, Kazoo, and Trustpilot. As you can see, they invest across the UK and the United States. And they haven't fared well by holding on to those positions once the companies went publicly traded. And the other thing that you'll notice when you look at their collateral is they're very focused on distractions such as ESG and DEI. We've done presentations recently critiquing both these opaque methods of trying to force investors to behave a particular way. Um, why is Molten trading at a 62% discount to NAV? That's fairly remarkable. And we don't know the answer to that. It's rather remarkable that such a discount exists. And we'll probably look to revisit the firm when they put out another piece of collateral, whether that's a half year report or a full year report, because we find that discount rather remarkable and we'd like to understand a bit better why that is. And when you look at their NAV progression, you can see that the value of the fund based on exits and reinvesting that money continues to increase steadily over time. So for example, uh, 937 pence would be the value per share. And perhaps let's say it's trading at 350 pence. So at a significant discount. And when you look across the board, so this is a firm called Edison Research and they produced this table and it shows a group of what they call a peer group of publicly traded venture capital firms, largely in the UK there with a few exceptions. and. They've pointed out here that all of them trade at an average discount of 32%. So to calculate the discount, they've pointed out here price divided by NAV, and that will give you a number. And from that, you can calculate the discount, which we've done here. Um, there's a reason for these discounts, and it's probably because there's a lot of overhead associated with operating a fund and having it also be a publicly traded company. Now, you may be wondering why Scottish Mortgage and Bailey Gifford aren't on this list. That's probably because they're only considering funds with most of their assets in startups, as are we. So this is quite an interesting takeaway. Now, just to conclude, our belief is that publicly traded venture capital funds require way too much overhead. There's investor relations, there's marketing, they start getting into ESG, and pretty soon they're hiring ahead of ESG, and there's all this overhead that erodes the value that's eventually realized and the discount to nav that they trade at hints at how that intrinsic value is eroded over time and i couldn't find any academic studies to support this but it seems to make sense now on the topic of concentrated versus diversified portfolios that's certainly something to consider arc's current fund is very concentrated whilst molten ventures is diversified and there's benefits to, to both and out of all the firms we've talked about today molten is the most appealing of the bunch we'll probably come back around to take another look at them later on down the road and we'll also have a look at what arcs fund is starting to look like now that they're revealing some waiting numbers so please leave your comments in the comment section make sure to subscribe to our channel and thanks for taking the time to listen to this video today